The most horrific and scary death in human history. In 2014, Brad Byers... I feel like I should scan this video. ...set a Guinness World Record for swallowing a dozen swords at once. He even managed to turn them in his throat, but... Yo! What if you sneeze? What if you have to... Like, what if it's like allergy season? And you just start... And then the swords just in, just impale you. F came to the unlucky trickster with another object, not even a sharp one. The young Canadian magician decided to shove an umbrella down his throat, and he accidentally pressed the button. The open umbrella blocked the poor man's windpipe and didn't allow him to pull it out. Instead of applause from the audience, he received painful asphyxia. But a terrible and sophisticated death can happen not only to magicians, but to any of us. He died? He died? Bro, why wouldn't they make sure that the button wouldn't work? You're about to swallow an umbrella, they still got the button activated? And it can happen at any second, and where we least expect it. What animal can kill you right in your bed? How not to lose your head while traveling by train? How long will it take you to die in a closed coffin? These most terrible and sometimes ridiculous deaths will make you look at the surround- How do you fit an umbrella in your mouth? It's their job. They practice that. You couldn't fit an umbrella in your mouth. Like, it would- it, you would have to- you would have to take- it would take some time. But you- and you would have to resist your gag reflex, but you're also shoving the umbrella down your stomach. So, it's possible, but it's pretty hard. The world a little bit differently. Fire ass intro. Oh my god. In the tropics, you can meet many deadly predators. But in this sleepy Brazilian town of Caratinga, a wild cow attacked a farmer. One night in July 2013, Juan Maria de Souza came home after a hard day in the fields and went to bed with his wife. He closed the doors properly so that some wild animals wouldn't get into the house, but it didn't help. In the middle of the night- A cow heard... broke into his house and killed him? You're not- you're fucking kidding me. A cow broke into a man's house and murdered him. An almighty crash. And the next moment, from a height of two and- How the fuck would it get on the roof? A cow got on your roof and fell through? One half meters, a one and a half ton cow fell on the spouses. It strayed from the herd and wandered onto the farmhouse roof from the hill nearby. Juan was taken to the How hospital. How get on the roof? What is your, is your house directly next to a hill? With a broken leg, but unexpectedly passed away. The autopsy showed that the strong blow from the cow caused severe internal bleeding. Jesus. But at least Juan's family had a body to bury. In November 2000, a bloody tragedy shook a Zimbabwean village. Local resident Tendai Maseka didn't have time to get to the toilet as he was literally torn into pieces. Early in the morning, the police found his remains in the bushes. Experienced officers wouldn't be surprised by an ordinary corpse, but only arms, legs, and a head were left on this poor fellow. Witnesses said Maseka was having a great time at a local bar the night before. Suddenly, at about 11 p.m., he was caught short and went to the outhouse. So, Some so his whole torso was just gone? Blood-curdling screams were heard from the street. For the African police, this story was quite familiar. Masika was attacked and dragged into the bushes by bloodthirsty creatures we're not used to considering as a threat. These scavengers attack in packs and eat prey on the spot until they're driven off. That's right, unlike lions, hungry hyenas? hyenas don't bite through the victim's throat, ending their suffering. They eat it alive, starting from... Oh my god, that that would be the most painful fucking way. You're getting torn to shreds by hyenas. And they eat your torso. They don't bite your head or your heart or some shit. They just eat you alive. What the fuck? From the stomach. The remains of the gutted Maseka were buried in a closed coffin. The killer hyenas were soon found and shot, although the brutal killings didn't end. To this day, thousands of deaths are on account of these creatures in Africa. 
but well, Bro, hyenas kill that many people? I know on like a 1v1 basis, hyenas are pretty fucking tiny. Like they're scared. But if there's a pack of them, bro, I'm taking a gun. I'm fucking mowing them the fuck down. They try to attack me. Most of us live far from the dangerous tropics. Many other unexpected dangers prey on our lives. Even more terrible and ridiculous deaths threaten inhabitants of the concrete jungle. Canadian lawyer Harry Hoy killed himself in the early 90s after a seemingly innocuous question from an intern. His law firm was located on the 24th floor of the Toronto Dominion skyscraper. On July the 9th, 1993, Hoy was giving a tour to a new group of junior associates. One of them went to drink water for a couple of minutes, and when he returned, for some reason, everyone applauded Hoy as if he were a rock star. So the intern asked what had happened. Instead of answering, Harry Hoy looked at the large window in front of him and then suddenly took off, ran, and jumped. It turned out that the lawyer did his favorite trick in front of new employees every now and then. He hit the glass with a running start to prove how strong it was. And oh, what a fucking idiot. Oh, what a fucking idiot. Oh, my God. I've heard of this story before. He would fucking, it was like a thing he would do at his work. Because their windows were strong as shit. So people would fucking egg him on. He would just run into the window and it would stop him. But the whole fucking window came out and then he fell to his death. What a way to die. Damn. That thought process on the way down was probably like, damn. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Every time, the window just pushed him back. But this time, the heavy duty window flew out of the frame. It only broke at the bottom along with Harry. Well, at least Harry died quickly, and that can't be said about the guy who was cooked alive by the mixer. Vincent Smith- Oh, in New Jersey! Oh, no. ...had a dream job. He worked at a candy factory in New Jersey. On July the 9th, 2009, the guy's usual was loading raw materials into a huge tank when suddenly his colleagues noticed that he had disappeared somewhere. And when they looked into the tank, just in case, they saw that the enormous blades of the mixer had caught Vincent and pulled him in and down. He was boiling alive in melted chocolate at a temperature of 120 degrees for several minutes until he suffocated. Now, we all know that... You would boil alive and die by drowning. What's worse, that or hyenas eating you? Dude, I don't know. Those both suck. That's the worst death? Bro, the boiling... Which one would be quicker? I feel like the hyenas would kill you quicker. Even though hy he, hyenas would be way worse. It would be way worse for, like, fractions of a second. The sweets are bad for us, but not to that extent. A student at the Chinese University of Huachao died painfully trapped in an elevator. On that fateful evening of September the 14th, 2014, a young guy had been waiting for an elevator to his campus floor for a long time. So when the elevator finally arrived, the young man hurried to get in. But when the guy stepped into it, it suddenly went up. The no! Oh my, yeah, but that's not, is that as painful? Student didn't have time to jump back and was instantly squeezed between floors. And from the first moment when he got stuck, tens of kilograms of pressure- Is that him? ...fell on his diaphragm as the elevator was still trying to go up. University security guards immediately called the repair service, but when they rescued the victim, he was no longer breathing. The nah. elevator had been painfully strangling the unfortunate young man for half an hour. But even killer elevators can match the sophistication of another seemingly safe type of transport. Railroads can easily show you the light at the end of the tunnel. In June 2022, a Berlin teenager died from running into a semaphore. Is it possible he was moving so fast that he couldn't turn away? Okay, the thing is, the guy was running on the roof of a moving train. And this time, in addition to the usual poles on the sides of the road, there was a large semaphore with a crossbar on the way. The 15-year-old boy died from- Damn, that's some subway surfers type shit. Getting fucking clotheslined by a traffic light? Fuck shock after the rupture of internal organs yeah that happens all the time in gta now nah, that's literally subway surfers yeah that's literally subway surfers bro getting knocked out running on the top of the train 
That shit just clotheslines you? In just a couple of minutes, and on April the 9th, 2016, an adult Britain invented the railway guillotine. He clung to the side of an inner oh, city train and appeared, off. rushing past the train, completely cut off his head. And 17-year-old Asia Leeshan Ferguson had his head blown off with a powerful kick on June 28th. On a roller coaster? Nah. 2008, a guy illegally entered the restricted area of the Six Flags Amusement Park in Georgia by climbing over two high fences. Suddenly, an unusual silhouette started rapidly approaching him, but unfortunately, it was not an amusement park guard. It was a roller coaster with passengers hanging down. At a speed of 85 miles per hour, one of the passengers involuntarily turned into a karate master and literally knocked Asia's head with a kick of inhuman strength. The irony was that the guy had crawled under the tracks trying to find his hat, which had blown up. No! Bro, imagine being that guy, too. Oh, my God. You would blame yourself for the rest of your life, even though it's his fault that he fucking broke into the goddamn roller coaster and started climbing that shit. Nah. All for a hat? Wow, he really knocked that motherfucker's head off. I feel like that would break your feet. Off from a strong wind. Now involuntary mur involuntarily Involuntary murder, yeah. You wouldn't even you wouldn't even get charged with that though. That's entire you're on a roller coaster, you can't move. And he fucking climbed that illegally. Oh my god, what a nice shaker cup this is. If only it was tagged below in the bottom left of the screen. <laughs> ah, that's it. Oh, he no longer needed the hat. And Damn, and you're out of six flags. You're out of six flags having a fun day. This isn't like a drive to work or some shit. You're enjoying your day on, on fucking, on the Superman ride or some shit. Or, fu or fucking Green Lantern, whatever the hell it is. You're just fucking sitting there. Ooh, this is fun. Woo! And then you fucking kill somebody. Then the rest, then you gotta get interviewed by the cops. And the passenger who beheaded Asia needed surgery to reconstruct his legs. But 18-year-old Romanian Anna Ursu managed to die on a train that wasn't going anywhere, all because of the love of beautiful shots. The girl used to take hundreds of pictures per day, but most of the pictures seemed too simple for her. Anna wanted to take the ultimate selfie that would kill everyone on social media. In search of just such a shot, Anna went to the station and climbed Yeah, I already know this one about to be the dumbest death ever, but he's trying to seek a cool selfie. Bro, that's so fucking stupid. Oh no, I need my I need my selfies more extravagant so I get more likes. Like, bro, come on. Just use Photoshop. Yeah. Use a fucking green screen. You're really about to you really about to risk your life so you can get a fucking cool picture of yourself. Under the roof of a standing electric train, Anna was unaware that death literally That's not even that cool of a selfie though. Like, if I'm about to risk my life for a cool selfie, I'm about to be going skydiving. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not I'm not about to be laying like she's laying on top of a train. The background, you wouldn't even be able to see the train. Hung over her the second she got there and was only waiting for the right moment. It all happened suddenly when the girl decided to lift her leg for a flirtatious look. And although she didn't touch the high voltage wires, they were close enough for Anna to be struck by 27,000 volts. Witnesses said the girl instantly lit up like a bonfire. Soon, she died in the hospital, but oddly enough, not due to cardiac arrest from a powerful electric shock, the selfie hunter was killed by burns that covered half her body. Wow. And if you think this is the most terrible or ridiculous death, just wait. Oh, in God, we're in Kentucky now. Now we're in the South here. 91, Kentucky resident James Hatcher had to bury his wife twice. It all started when the Hatcher's son died just a few hours after his birth. Because of the incredible grief, James' wife Octavia fell into a deep depression and didn't get out of bed for months. But when she seemed to be getting better, one morning in May, she just didn't wake up. The doctor was called to the house, stated cardiac arrest, and James, heartbroken with double grief, arranged a funeral. 
However, the inexplicable and sudden death of his wife haunted Hatcher. He refused to believe it, and then, hoping for a miracle, he decided to dig up the coffin. The rich interior of the coffin was torn to shreds. Octavia's fingernails were torn down to the bone, but most importantly, a grimace of horror froze on her face. Apparently, she really came back to life and tried to get out. Although the doctor swore to James- How did she- how was she declared dead then? That his wife had no- That's the worst way to go. Getting buried alive? Pulse before the burial. While investigating this case, the doctors soon discovered that other locals also started falling into an extremely deep sleep. So deep that they couldn't be awakened. It was only then that they realized what? they were dealing with an outbreak of sleeping sickness, usually uncommon in the United States, caused by the bites of tropical tsetse flies. A, a fucking thing? A fly that bites you and you just pass out? A tiny insect took Octavia to her grave alive. Upon waking up, she could stay alive in a closed coffin from 10 minutes to up to a day and a half. Just imagine the horror that she had to experience, even if Octavia managed to break through and the coffin. And you can't even end your suffering. And even if you break through the coffin, yeah, you're probably the dirt's just gonna fall on you and then suffocate you. She would just be covered. With they need to bring back those bells. Yeah, that used to be a thing, in in medieval times or even before then. They used to they used to bury you with a string and a bell, and so you could ring it in case you were dead. And I'm pretty sure they it, with popes. They if if you were a pope, they used to make sure you were dead by hitting you with a hammer or some shit. I I remember learning that too. Dirt. As a result, James Hatcher the had The fact that it used to be so common to bury people alive that they had to put bells in coffins. Bury Octavia again. Only this time, he built a large tombstone for her with a warning to anyone too hasty to bury their loved ones. But the brave... Wait, what year did they die? 1891? Warning to anyone too hasty to bury their loved ones. But the brave crews of submarines are always ready for the fact that their ship would become a mass grave at the very bottom of the ocean. And only once in history, the sea brutally killed an entire- Dying in a submarine, that would be pretty bad too. ...team at a depth of just a couple of meters. For deep sea divers, this isn't even considered a dive. They work at great depths, and in order to not go up every time, they live in capsules with special conditions for months. On the Byford Dolphin Drilling Rig in the North Sea, these crew quarters were also just a few meters underwater. On November the 5th, 19- I heard of this! Oh my god, I think there's a movie about this. It's this fucking chamber with like a pressure release. And like, one, there was four guys, and one of them pulled it, and they don't know who did. And whoever pulled the release killed everybody. 83, four divers rested in a compartment at a shallow depth while their colleagues outside were disconnecting a bell that had just Oh, been is that not this? This might not be it. For unknown reason, the divers forgot to close just one damper. And if up to that point, the pressure in the capsule reached as much as nine atmospheres, now it was rapidly getting to a normal level. This is much worse than if you were thrown into space without a spacesuit. The blood of three divers and capsules instantly boiled, and those bubbles tore all the insides. But the fourth diver was even less fortunate. The blast wave from the decompression literally shot him out and smeared him along the corridor of the platform. Upon arrival, rescuers found the internal organs and bones of the poor man scattered within a radius of 10 meters. Explosive- He probably died instantly, though. Like, that would be a really quick death. Just because the pressure, it would explode you. You would basically explode from the insides. Decompression really butchered him. The only consolation for the relatives was that all the divers died, though brutally, but instantly. Yeah. But not only workers in extreme professions can die so terribly. A Ukrainian chemistry student was 
torn apart by chewing gum in 2009. What? This guy really liked sour gum. So at home, he specially prepared a bowl of citric acid and dipped his gum in it before putting it in his mouth. Delicious. It's just that on the student's table, there were also bowls with various chemicals for experiments. So one fateful day, the guy accidentally dipped Bro, his- Bro, are you fucking kidding me? He has his citric acid uh, fucking bowl that he dips his gum in next to some deadly chemical? chewing gum into a composition of potassium in his mouth. It began to react violently with his saliva, and when he closed his jaw, a loud explosion occurred. The guy remained sitting, but without his head. Bye. Yo! Oh my god, no way people died this way. Bro fucking ate chewing gum and his head exploded. I don't believe, why would he have them right next to each other? But in the rarest cases, nothing remains of a person at all. Just like during Aloha Airlines Flight 243 on April 28th, 1988. When the liner was flying over the ocean at a height of Everest, a piece of fuselage shells suddenly fell off. Several dozen passengers suffered from that, but the flight attendant Clarabelle Lansing was just thrown out in a split second, wow. and her body was never found. Which of these deaths do you think was the scariest? Write in the comments. Dude, I would be pissed. Like, if I, like, all the other ones, you're, you're dying pretty quickly or you're actively dying. Like, this one, you're getting thrown out of a plane and you're probably just actively thinking, like, bro, damn. Like, like, I, I'm really falling to my death. And then you have a heart attack before you hit the ground. Like, that would suck. The drowning one would be pretty bad in the coke. The drowning one was bad. I would say that was the worst. What was the worst? Drowning in hot coke, you're boiling. You're boiling and drowning at the same time. That's fucking awful. The hyena one, the buried alive too. Buried alive would probably be the worst. Then the boiling and then the hyena. Yeah, for sure. All right. That was a good ass night.